Does focusing on the audience sound like a no-brainer to you? Well, the reality in development cooperation is that many communications efforts are driven entirely by what a project wants the audience to know and not what the audience might like to know. Likewise, the purpose of many projects communication is to talk about development and not so much communicating for development. In other words, it's much more likely that you're supposed to talk about what your project does than assisting with an approach that tries to reach developmental goals, like achieving a certain behavior change, for example. Now, what does this entail? From our social interactions, we all know telling people about something they did not ask for is not the most effective way in terms of getting them listening to you. Just because your audience googled climate change and then came over to your web page doesn't mean they're interested to hear all about your project. They might be okay with interspersed information about what your project does in this or that regard, but they are usually primarily interested in the subject they search for, not the institutions involved. Therefore, it's a very good idea to find out what your target group really wants to know about your typical topics and then answer these questions, at least for starters. Deliver exactly on what people want to know first and then hook it to what you want them to know, but don't overdo it. Actually, I want to mention this briefly. There's a type of communication strategy that is based on the belief that it can be advantageous to stick entirely to your topics and not talk about your project, brand or organization at all. Uh, those are the so-called generic approaches. The rationale behind this is A, showing off is not something we are taught to do, especially when it comes to doing something good that is humanly expected of you in the first place. And B, your audience will definitely figure out who is behind the work when it's really well done. Maybe they want to figure it, figure it out who did the work and have to search for it, which makes it even more appealing to them. But that's something for a special course. I'm digressing. Let's talk about an example for delivering information that is wanted but hardly ever communicated by projects. Let's say your project was often asked about its large overhead costs or maybe you overheard muffled remarks about how little of your spending actually benefited your beneficiaries. Then it can be a great idea to write up a candid article including detailed costing tables with thorough informations and explanations. Maybe your project runs the secretariat of a multi-stakeholder platform and therefore most expenses are staffing costs or relate to technical communications infrastructure, setting up meetings, events, advisors spending time on the phone or writing advisory notes. In other words, the nature of the project is not some sort of implementation at grassroots level with spending on machinery, for example. A lot of projects nowadays are on a political advisory level and not hands-on as the cliches about development work uh, that are still persisting in the West suggest. Therefore, direct impact to beneficiaries is not easily measured. Many professionals in development cooperation believe that they know their audience and their needs, wants or even aspirations. In other words, they tend to make assumptions about the audience. Relying on these perceptions for your decisions can go totally wrong. It's better to conduct research. Ask real people in your segments what they think about something and test your messages with them. We'll get to knowing your audience just now again, so bear with me. One practical tip for this is to write down everything your team gets asked at workshops, social functions, on social media, via email, you name it. Every question, don't be selective and note it down verbatim. 
don't, you don't want to lose important nuances with your pre-conceptualizations. Put these questions into a catalog and see what comes up often. Answer those typical, typical questions to the point, to, to a very specific point on your website, for example. This is the ultimate recipe to be completely responsive to your audience needs. Make elements of this part of your underlying strategic thinking. Another tip concerns search engines. Because of better functioning artificial intelligence, people type in or voice in entire questions. You can use Google Trends or the Google Keyword Planner in Google Ads Manager, for example, to find out what kind of subjects or questions are, ser are searched for around your topics very often. Clearly, you cannot change your entire subject due to this research, but you can tweak your headlines, for instance, so that they are more attractive to a target group of yours, you know, your target group. You'll see that people are looking for value. They want content that solves their problems. Using these tools, you'll see what kind of value they are looking for, and you can create your solutions for them around your topics. One more point on reaching out to your audience. Your audience, or more technically your target group, is not necessarily the group of people you need to address in order to change a particular behavior of theirs. As mentioned, it could turn out that research reveals that young mothers' decisions on breastfeeding are actually determined by their mothers-in-law, or that politicians are not the ones to convince about a certain policy change, but maybe some individuals in their constituency who have strong impact on the sentiments in the group. The standing of politicians, their clout, depends on what their constituency wants. In most cases, they will do what their constituency wants. In both cases, you have target groups that are not obvious. Another reason to have your own fresh research going.